CTW Automation here and in this video we're going to show you a way to look at your bleed and think about it in terms of that zero velocity. You know, we've fought for years, myself personally, with people that still believe just because a shock isn't moving it can't have any force. You know, We're all used to these force first velocity and we know it goes to zero and they say, how can it have force here at zero? That's, that's impossible. It's not moving. And you, you try to tell them and you try to show them, but we're going to use a, a feature of probe to try to show you even more. So we should all be aware in, uh, in probe, we can do a rod force, a rod force test where we get to settle at a given time and we move at a given speed from one side to the other. Everybody with a crank dyno, you're used to seeing the, the machine stop, measure the load, go to the other side, and this is where we set that. Basically how long to pause and how fast to move between. And it's pretty important when you start to work with low bleed dampers. If you have a lot of bleed, you can, you can pause for a short period of time, and, and if you have very little, you have to give it a longer time. So, pretty easy to see. We got a force first absolute velocity. I ran the same damper, uh, a ProShock, thank you Brian, and I ran the adjuster mostly open, then I closed it quite a few, and you get the uh, red, red graphs wide open. The orange graph here is, 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 I think I was at minus 10 off, I really can't remember, but and then the blue is as closed as I could get it. So in theory, no bleed in the damper. Now there's always bleed. It's just how much you get rid of. And just by using the adjuster, this is where I ended up. So you have these three curves. I ran the same test on all of them and I ran the same rod force test with the same amount of pause on all of them. So we'll be able to look at that to determine and see just what happens with bleed when you stop or when you're going slow. So I ran these and in test data and the way to get to this area is if you right click on a particular file and you do create diagnostic. What happens is the software goes ahead and makes a new graph for you. Let me zoom back out here and Take these off the screen. So right here, and I'm going to take force off, right here is the displacement trace for this particular test. And I picked so far the one that was wide open, that red one. That's this red one here. Now in displacement, and this is a linear actuator, so it's going to look slightly different than your crank dyno, but it's okay. Your crank dyno is, just isn't going to move uh, like this. It's going to have a sine wave to it, more like this, where it goes to mid-stroke and it pauses, and then it goes to the uh, the other side, the, the, the yoke on a crank dyno, rotates, it goes to the other side and pauses again. So we take the force roughly, roughly right there and here, when we hope the load cell and the damper have stabilized to whatever force they're going to exert on the rod, which we measure with the load cell. So that's the displacement. And then we go in and I ran a five inch per second test. So this is the displacement, basically a sine wave, a five inch per second test. So I'm gonna turn the force signal on now. So there's the force signal. And you can see when we go up and we stop, it stabilizes and then it moves, it generates some force, generates some force coming back down, it stops and it stabilizes. Now I'm gonna zoom in here for you. So this would just be the second part of that rod force test is the way to look at this. So here's your displacement and it's going along. It's just paused there holding and the force comes down and forces over here on the right side. Displacement scale is on the left. So the force at this point coming back down is somewhere around minus three, minus three pounds. But you can see it rings for a second when it stops and it settles in very quickly. That's because there's a lot of bleed. The damper with a lot of bleed, it's easy for it to equalize internally. There's a pressure on both sides of that piston 
and if there's a lot of bleed that pressure once the the damper stops can equalize quick that's what we're going to show you so that's nine seconds so this bottom scale here is seconds so eight and a half to nine so it equalizes in roughly uh, a quarter of a second pretty quick a lot of bleed it's nice and easy no problem so then the next thing i did was i closed the adjuster not all the way you remember so this would be the orange one here that's the orange one i went from the red one to the orange one and that's the one we'll look at now so we're back to our shock diagnostic and just i'll zoom out just so you see so this is the the force wide open this is the force of the adjuster eh, mostly closed but not all the way and you can see it's about minus 700 pounds and this right here when it goes from this position to this position is moving at a half an inch per second so just moving at a half an inch per second builds up a pressure across that piston that results in 700 pounds. That's something to think about there. Then once it stops, it goes up and you can see from this distance, it equalizes. Now we'll zoom in because this is what we're really trying to focus on. We zoom in, think of that when it stops, it comes up. It overshoots a little bit and then it equalizes pretty quickly but you can see it is different having less bleed affected it and it takes longer to come up and equalize to where it was before with a lot of bleed so really at this point not very exciting you say yeah okay a little bit I, I see a little bit but so now what we're gonna do is we're going to add the one that I used where I closed it. You can see right away, big difference. So that's this blue one here. We went from, what, minus 400 to uh, somewhere around the minus. I could turn this on and get the exact number. Yeah, so minus 400 to minus 820. So, yeah, so that's double. So we go back to shock diagnostic and we have our displacement of force graphs again and you can see right away guess which one that green one is and we'll zoom in for you so you can see it so the purple one that's wide open the blue one was closed quite a bit but not all the way and here you have the green one that's as closed as we can make that adjuster so you can see once we stopped it was at minus 950 pounds once we stopped you see how long it took for the pressure inside to equalize across that piston if nine seconds that's ten seconds ten and a half that's eleven seconds so that's at least two seconds to get even close back to where the it is without a bleed or with a lot of bleed I apologize without a lot of bleed it's a visual of what bleed does at low speed at, at zero zero velocity at this case you can see it takes time to equalize and the, and the more your shock is closed the the better your body seal is all of your, your piston bands it takes time it has an internal pressure that internal pressure is a is a force is the way we measure it and just because you're not moving, just because you're at zero velocity does not mean there's not a resultant force being exerted. And you can see it right here. Now you can do this exact test on your crank dyno. You can do the same thing. You can pause for three seconds. You can run wide open, you know, halfway close and all the way close. And you will see how this affects it, how this operates. You can also see if our rod force test, you know, if we just come back here, our rod force test, if we pause for one second or we pause for four, is pretty important. And you can see why. If we, for the one that's all the way closed, if we pause for a second, we're somewhere over here. And let me turn this on. So we're somewhere over here, so we are, you know, we're talking about 30 pound difference. That's moving up and down the graph, you know, as we all know, when we measure the rod force and take it out, that's going to be a different reading. And 
you're going to you might be chasing something other than just that pure static spring right there so it's very interesting to see this see what the actual effects are and see what's actually going on and this is again this is just because in probe you can actually view the the real-time rod force you can set that up you can have it inside the start recording stop recording and you can see it and we talked uh, there we made the video before where we could see uh, perhaps what the force did as we moved from pausing now here we have the exact effects of bleed once we stop and how long different bleeds take to equalize and there's a visual right there and and I, uh, I I can't show you in any other way that makes it any more visible but those are three bleeds right there and there's three different results all from the same damper and it does matter once you stop how long you stop for in your rod force and that's why so I hope you enjoyed that and uh, we'll keep making more see you later